In this lesson, moving forward, I'm going to talk about the JDBC in Java, which basically is the Java database connector. So throughout this particular module, module three, we'll be working with several lessons and I'm going to demonstrate from scratch how to set up your environment, how to create your own local server, for example, how to connect and create your SQL or backend database. And then I'm going to also demonstrate creating several Java programs and connecting to your database, creating tables, adding users, and so forth. So in this particular lesson, which is the first lesson in this module, I'll just talk about the JDBC basic concepts. So you actually are comfortable with what JDBC is, what are the requirements, and how does it work? So Java database connectivity. A simple architecture within the Java application we use the JDBC connector to connect to a database now this database could be the MySQL database SQL server Oracle server or any relational database for example that you can connect to the important element here is the JDBC connector and I'll demonstrate later on how to download the JDBC connector and install it within our Eclipse editor. So basically Java application using JDBC to connect to a database. How does it really work? So it basically helps you write Java applications or programs that manage essentially three programming activities. First, we use JDBC to connect to a data source, like a database for example. Second, we can send queries and update statements to the database. So once we establish a connection, for example, we can execute several commands and queries in Java and write Java programs that will actually go out there and update a database. And third, retrieve and process the results received from the database in answer to your actual question or query. So it's a powerful way of using Java to connect to an external database and then executing queries. So let me give you an example. Let's say you're running an e-commerce site and you like to see and search your product list or your revenue stream for that day or for that week or a month. So we can simply write a Java program that is going to go out there using the JDBC connector and fetch that information for you. JDBC components. First one is the API basically the application programming interface. So this API basically provides access to relational data from the Java programming language. So using the JDBC API, applications can execute SQL statements, retrieve results, and propagate those changes back to an underlying data source. The API can also interact with multiple data sources in a distributed or heterogeneous environments. So you're not limited to just one type of database. You can have an Oracle server running, you can have an SQL server running, and JDBC will communicate with both. Then we have the JDBC driver manager, which is another component. So this JDBC driver manager is a class within Java, and it defines objects which can connect Java applications to a JDBC driver. So the driver manager has traditionally been the backbone of the JDBC architecture. So no matter which Java program you write, as long as you need to connect to a backend database, you need to use the driver manager class and then define objects, which will eventually connect your actual application to the driver. And then the last component is the JDBC test suite, or one of the last, I guess. The JDBC driver test suite helps you to determine that JDBC drivers will run your program. These tests are not comprehensive or exhaustive, but they do exercise many of the important features in the API itself. And of course, the last one was the bridge. The Java software bridge provides JDBC access via ODBC drivers. And you need to note that you need to load the ODBC binary code onto each client machine that uses this driver. And what happens as a result is that the original ODBC driver 
is most appropriate on a corporate network where client installations are not a major problem or for application server code, for example, written in Java in a three-tier architecture. So the last few components are for environments where you have multiple servers running or a large enterprise. But essentially, the important areas are the first two or three components where we actually connect using the driver to the and the JDBC connector to the backend database. Now, before I move forward with the Eclipse editor and start writing these programs and try to connect to a certain database, let me first walk you through and demonstrate what components are really required to actually go ahead and set up your actual environment. So for example, we need a backend database. We also need to set up a personal web server, for example, on your own computer. Only then you can actually write programs in Java Eclipse Editor and then be able to connect to the database. So before I end this lesson, I'm just going to show you various components. And then, of course, you'll be able to configure them in subsequent lessons as well. So let's go ahead and let me first switch to my Chrome browser here. So within my Chrome browser, I'm actually now connected to my personal web server that I've installed and configured. And this is called the my admin or my PHP my admin. And this is my backend database. And notice the name of the database here is Redstone Shop. And of course, the server is my local host with an IP address of 127.0.0.1. We can download the PHP admin database. It's free. Just search for PHP My Admin Database, SQL Database, and you'll be able to download it and install it. Straightforward process. But I'm going to demonstrate, of course, in subsequent lessons how to actually configure this database and how to set everything up. So not to worry. In this lesson, just want to demonstrate the different components that go about before we can actually start writing Java programs and then connect to this backend database. So on the left navigation explorer, you notice that I have several databases. For example, the Redstone shop is that what we are connected with right now. And this has various tables within this database, such as brand, categories, products, and users, and so on. So just the basic interface look and feel of what an SQL database looks like. And of course, I can click on the brand table, for example, and it will show me the details for the table. If I were to navigate to the structure of this table, I would be able to see the fields within the table itself. So for example, this table has an ID field with a primary key, which means it has to be unique, and a brand field as well. So similarly, within this database, you can have multiple tables, and each table can have fields. And once we get to lessons where we actually create Java programs, you'll be able to actually become proficient by adding fields, tables, creating tables, inserting data into these tables using Java programs. But here, just the basic component or backend database that you need before you can actually use the JDBC connector. The second important component that you need is the actual web server and in my instance in this case i'm using the xamp server this is the free web server by the way you can also download and i'll demonstrate how to download how to install so not to worry just showing you the components at this point so once you download the xamp server and you install it you configure it notice the mysql service is running and here's the port number for the MySQL server. So once you install XAMPP and configure it, we need to make sure that the MySQL service is running. So the two components, right? We need a backend database. We also need our web server running. And this allows me to actually use the local host, right? So local host and then colon 8015, which is my port. And you can see that I'm running the Apache web server at 8015. So these two are required. The third element that is required is, let me switch to my Eclipse editor here. Perfect. All right, so the third element, for example, is the MySQL connector, okay? And this is 
required when you work with your Eclipse editor so that when you actually write programs and we use the driver class and we try to connect to the backend database you will need the SQL connector and I'll of course demonstrate how to download it how to install it and so on so basic three things that are required right so we need the connector the second thing that we need is the XAMPP server which is our local server local host that you need to set up and then of course our backend database so these three are required once you have these three things then we can go back to our editor and start creating Java programs so I hope this helps practice take a look at some of the definitions understand the concept of JDBC how does it work and also these components so with this let's move to the next lesson